I was returning to my family after a long and disappointing journey. My last ship carrying a precious cargo had disappeared at sea. Now, on my way home through the great forest, I lost my way. Take all you need and more, but nothing take away. Well, my children, since my host will not allow me the pleasure of his company, you will be my companions while I eat. Very prime indeed, eh, Lucy? You always had a taste for fine things. Dearest father, if your ships arrive safely in port, you may bring me home a string of pearls. I sorely miss the one we were forced to sell. Father, if you find you are rich again, and you wish to make up for all I have suffered from your poverty, I wouldn't refuse a ruby necklace so long as they are perfectly matched and large enough to suit me. Well, you asked for nothing. And I can give you nothing. Papa, all I ask is that you return home safely. You must wish something for yourself, child. I would have one perfect rose. were explicit, but nothing take away. This will cost you your life. I only picked it for my daughter, my bell. No doubt she loves the flower more than she loves you. Oh, no, no, she loves me above everything. Enough to come here to my castle? You couldn't ask that of me. 
Do not beg mercy of me. I have none to give to a murderer of roses. I shall tell them of your request. Request? It is my command. Now go. In your saddlebags are the gifts you promised them. Tell them there is more treasure here if they want it. Do not attempt to deceive me, or I will destroy all you've ever loved. How shall I ever find this place again? Your horse will know the way. A flecked mane surrounding a sickening nightmare of a face. Crazed eyes that stare. And I must return to his castle tomorrow or I die. Papa, you will not go back there. Promise me. Oh, Belle, stop carrying on so. Father was so upset by his troubles, he couldn't see things properly. This so-called beast was probably nothing but a great noble. Very eccentric, no doubt rather hairy, but generous, very generous. Here's a beast and no more. What of that? All men are beasts. What else could you call my husband running out on me the day you lost your fortune? You say he's other treasures there. Indeed, but I shall not return to them. Oh, then you will not return. No, I shall not. I was obliged to make a promise so as I could gain my freedom. Your father's no fool, Bell. Remember that. But what if he comes and hunts you down here? If he dared, we'd be ready for him, Nick. Indeed, it might not be a bad idea to return to the castle. If all you say about its treasures is true, we could track him down and give him a touch of cold steel. No, he can keep his treasures. So long as I can keep mine. Give me my children. I was wrong. His powers can reach out farther than his kingdom. What will you do? I will carry out my promise. I have no choice. I shall go back to the castle tomorrow to die. But he didn't want you. He wanted one of them. Anthony, you don't think I would go? Well, how could I leave you, my own husband? I wouldn't keep you from going, Sue. If you felt it was your duty. My duty is to take care of you and my poor motherless brother. I mean, who would look after him if I... I would. Surely you're more to the beast's taste. I shall not go. I did not ask for that horrid rose. Belle did. None of you shall suffer. I shall go alone. No, Papa. I will not allow that. Belle. Father, have you forgotten? The rubies did not burn my fingers. The pearl clasp did not slip from my fingers. Perhaps I have some charm against this beast's magic. Indeed. How could any creature harm such goodness? Oh, Belle does have a way with animals, Father. Papa, let me go with you and try to persuade him to release you from your promise. <laughs> this way.
a bell. You must reply when a monarch speaks to you. Welcome to my castle. What have you done with my father? At this moment, he is arriving home safely. That's impossible. Our journey here took hours. We arrived only a few minutes ago. You know, you're a stranger to the ways of this castle, though. I know what is possible, beast. You must not judge hastily. That which is impossible must be possible here, or all is lost. Here, let me show you about. Take my hand. Do not be afraid. You will not be harmed. Why should I believe you? You reminded me that I'm a beast, but I am also a king. Does that mean a king cannot lie? Only to himself. To his guests, he must tell the truth. And I am a guest here. Naturally. Why do you turn away from me? I have never spoken with a king before. <laughs> no. It is not my rank that frightens you. It would be better if you did not look into my eyes. As you will. This is our dining room, Belle. Very beautiful. Yes. You will dine here every evening. Alone? Like my father? Well, I shall join you. You'll want a companion for your dinner. No. I will join you. We cannot... I cannot be here while you... Eat? I could not be here while you devour your prey. I will not be eating with you. I will only serve as your companion. But I must be here. There's a question I must ask you. But that can wait until later. I want to show you... Uh, there's another room. your room, Belle. Do you like it? It looks very new. It is new. I created it for you. You'll be spending much of your time in this room. You are perfectly free to come and go as you please, so long as you do not attempt to leave the castle grounds. You will retire to your room every evening after dinner. I do not want you to venture forth until the following morning. You'll be safe here. No one can enter this room without your permission, not even me. Now, do you understand what is required of you? Yes. I'm to be a prisoner of the castle grounds by day and a prisoner of my room by night. You must try not to be frightened of me. I will try. I cannot promise to succeed. Am I really so very ugly, then? You're not ugly, beast. You're monstrous.
this one is far too plain. I, I like the other one much better. Bring back the other one, please. I'm free to choose what I eat. Well, you may choose the wine, but the glass is too full. I didn't mean to disturb you. Please continue with your dinner. I had quite enough, thank you. Uh, you scarcely touched it. You must eat. I have very little appetite left. Well, if you don't like the salmon, there's the lamb. I'm Beast. sure. Beast. The food is perfect. Then why don't you finish it? It is not the food, but your interest in my eating which causes me to stop. Oh. You said you never lie to your guests. And tell me truthfully, am I being fattened up for your dinner? What? Am I to be washed down with the red wine or the white? <laughs> Surely you don't think I invited you here in order to devour you? Invite? You send strange invitations, sir. Engraved with threats and sealed with my father's life? There was no other way to get you here. Well, you might have tried another way. Would you have come if I had asked? No. Now that you're here, you can see there's nothing to fear. If there's anything you need, anything you wish. Give me one thing. Anything. A truthful answer. Why did you bring me here? I'm seeking... I have been seeking... I seek. Yes? A wife. You want to marry me? I must. But I don't love you. Then you refuse me. Yes, I refuse you.
Good morning, Belle. I hope you slept well. My bed was quite comfortable. I must ask your forgiveness for last night. I did not wish to frighten you. I want to become your friend. Then you must learn to control your temper. <laughs> Alas, such rages are common to my kind. It is my nature. Then change it. Only you can change it. <laughs> no, I think not. Tell me, Beast, who are you? Who are your parents? I'm sorry, Belle, I cannot answer you. You will not answer me. Who are you, Belle? <laughs> Don't mock me. I'm serious, I want to know. Surely you know all there is to know about me. I only know the facts. They don't matter here. What does matter here? Your feelings. I want to know your feelings. Why? To make you happy, to know your heart. Then you will tell me when I may leave for my home. Can't you try to be happy here? I shall never succeed. Ask me for anything and it is yours. Uh, if there's something that does not satisfy you, we can change it. Well, we can begin with your name. Beast. I did not understand you. Well, it's perfectly clear from last night that if I'm forced to continue to call you Beast, you will continue to behave as one. So, if we can find some gentler name. Call me what you will. My Lord Tusker. What? Perhaps, uh, Sir Snout. Do you ridicule me? <laughs> well, you said that I could call you what I will. No, no, it shall be, um, Lord Magic and Sir Gentle Eyes. Believe me, a change of name will make my stay here more tolerable. As you wish. Come, now you may show me around the garden. There's not a bit of rust or mildew. Who cares for your garden? It's your garden now. <laughs> well, you needn't tell me who does your gardening. It's just that I would love to learn their secrets. You're free to ask my gardener, if you can find them. <laughs> Are they about? <laughs> of course. They're invisible. Have you hurt your foot? <laughs> oh, no. I just don't want to trample on any of the elves who do your gardening. <laughs> you needn't worry about that. Crushed elves make marvelous topsoil. Are you laughing at me, Lord Magic? Don't you believe in elves? Everyone in my family does. No, Belle, I don't believe in elves. Like all creatures, I only believe in my own magic. I have no magic of my own to believe in. You have, but it is satisfying that you do not know it. <laughs> I am quite ignorant. That much I do know. Well, you're an expert on flowers and elves. <laughs> yes, but you'd be hard pressed to find anything else. My schooling ended when my father lost his fortune and we moved to the country. I tend a tiny plot of herbs and have a few rose bushes. I can tell the difference between a Caucasian rose and a Chinese rose merely by scent, but I could not tell you where to find China or Caucasia on a map. Well, we can remedy that if you wish. <laughs> With what? Invisible schoolmasters? No. I never paid much attention to the ones I could see, so I doubt that I'd make much of a scholar here. I learn nothing when I'm afraid, except that I'm afraid. You need not be afraid to learn here. What you learn or cannot learn, we can discuss at dinner. It will give us something quiet to talk about. That would be nice. When can we begin? Begun. Where's the school? You're in it. <laughs> Clever Lord Magic. What is it you wish to learn above all things? What kind of beast you are. 
Then return to your room. But, but you cannot enter my room. We cannot even speak there. Teach me here, now. You go too quickly, Belle. I told you not to look into my eyes. I'm not afraid of them anymore. Because you see yourself reflected there. No. Because I see your pain. Why are you so sad? Go to your room. For an ignorant girl, you presume too much. Because I see your pain. Why are you so sad? Go to your room. For an ignorant girl, you presume too much. Did indeed. This is the best chocolate cake I've ever tasted. And as for the recipe, but I don't have to talk to a plate. I arrived late so as not to spoil your meal, yet you seem annoyed. Indeed I am. I spent the entire afternoon upstairs poring over those picture books. I found pictures of griffins, centers, scarily things, but couldn't find anything that bore any resemblance to you. Well, I did not place those books in your room to teach you about me. Then why must I read them? To teach you about yourself. I'm not an animal. Are animals so hateful to you, then? No, Sir Gentle Eyes. But like you, I much prefer roses. Well, you've been such a hard-working scholar today. You deserve an entertainment. Something quiet, I trust? There is nothing more quiet, a fable. Is there a theater here? We have no need of theaters here. Once upon a time. Oh, is it true? I only like true stories. Well, of course it's true. Now, where was I? I? Once upon a time, in the spring of the year, there lived a unicorn, the most marvelous and fabled beast. Oh, indeed, I know all about him. He was in my books. <laughs> now, the unicorn lived in a great forest. And many hunters had tried to track him down and kill him there. Was he fierce? No, no, no. He was the gentlest of creatures. But unfortunately, the unicorn was born with a great, magnificent horn. Simple people, uh, kings and peasants, believed that this horn, when ground into a powder, could cure all ills. Uh, nose colds, ingrown toenails, baldness, lover's laments. And they would pay dearly to have these powers. Well, could it? I mean, could they cure all those things? My dear Belle, I am a king, not a chemist. How should I know? May I proceed? Uh, do. The unicorn was very swift and clever. His powerful eyes could penetrate the leaves of the forest and discover any hunter hidden there. His sensitive nose could smell an enemy within a mile. In fact, so fortunate was he in his powers that no human being had ever been able to get near him. Until one day, while grazing in the forest, he spied a maiden gathering wildflowers by the stream. She was the most beautiful girl the unicorn had ever seen. No, I don't think she's all that pretty. She was the only girl the unicorn had ever seen. Oh, well, that makes more sense. Yeah. He gazed upon her with love. She saw him. She smiled. And he was lost. He told her of his love and asked if she could possibly return it, and she assured him that she could. Well, the unicorn was so filled with joy, he thought his heart would burst with happiness. He leapt, and he danced, and he gambled about her. And she made a ring of flowers and put it around his horn, swearing to love him forever. Oh. Well, as night drew near, the girl informed the unicorn that she had to return to her family and invited him to accompany her in order to meet her parents. Well, the happy creature agreed, uh, eager to have the consent of her family since she had agreed to become his wife. As they walked along through the forest, he told her of the life that they would have together. He would teach her the secrets of the wildflowers, their cures. He would make a home for her in the hollow of the great elm, oh. and there they would live in perfect happiness. Oh. But as they 
drew near the edge of the forest. A hunter lay waiting in ambush. He drew his strong bow and shot his arrows into the unicorn. He died in her arms. Oh, and she died of grief thereafter. Oh, she lived to marry the hunter. She was his sweetheart. You see, it had been arranged for her to lure the creature to the edge of the forest to where the hunter was waiting. Oh, that cruel and faithless girl. I knew I didn't like her face. You mustn't uh, judge her harshly. But she betrayed him. But it was her nature to betray him, just as it was his nature to be betrayed. But he died happy, the last sight being her face. Oh. That all? Do you like it? No. I think it's the worst story I've ever heard in my life. Beast. If a story must be sad, then it must at least have a bit of truth to it. I mean, this story is sad for the sake of being sad and nothing more. I'm sorry you didn't enjoy it. Tomorrow, we'll try another. No, I... I think from now on, I will do the storytelling. As you wish. Good night now. Belle. If you were my wife, I would tell you only happy stories. Please, let's not discuss that again. It is my nature to ask. And mine to refuse. Am I really so fierce? Good night. Wait! Belle, please. Forgive me, I uh, did not mean to. Forgive you? I shall never forgive you until you learn how to control your temper. But it was not out of temper, Belle. It was out of love. Then I shall have none of such love. No, sir. Down. Fine. Now you will practice controlling your temper. You don't leave me. I'm going to my room where I can have the civil company of a book. Imagine that you could be loved. Beast. You are no unicorn. Something. Who is this Aristotle? Why, he's uh, one of the wisest men who ever lived. Well, I find him a perfect fool. Now listen to this. Here, this. The female is less spirited than the male, softer in disposition, more mischievous, less simple, more impulsive. Whereas, he says, the male is more savage, more simple, and less cunning. And you do not agree. <laughs> Well, I am hardly cunning or mischievous. No, I think the man is a perfect fool, and I think he knows nothing about women, and I think he had best stick to his descriptions of the heavens. At least they and no one can dispute him. I mean, who's to say what lies on the surface of the moon? Who, oh, indeed? Well, enough of Aristotle and the craters of the moon. You need some sport with your study. What would you like to do? Well, I do enjoy a horseback ride. No. Do you still think that I would try to escape? I do not want you to risk injury. Gentle eyes. We promise to speak only the truth here. I keep no horses here. Why not? They fear me. Oh, poor beast. Well, we could play something else then. I could teach you something simple. Like, uh, hide and seek. I do not think I know that. Oh, it's very easy, really. One person hides, and the other person tries to find her. Her? I see. I must try to find you. Oh, yes. I, I do like hiding. <laughs> because, <I'm> hiding. <laughs> because you are more cunning, mischievous, and impulsive. Never mind. Close your eyes. Now count to ten slowly. 
and don't peek. Five. Ten. <gasps> you couldn't possibly have counted to ten that quickly. You cheated. If you can't play fairly, then I simply won't play with you. I agree. May we try again? Well, if you wish. But this time I shall hide much better, because you're not entirely to be trusted. Close your eyes. And don't peek. <laughs> Sorry, Bill. Oh, I'm sorry. You should be pleased. You won that game fairly. Oh, look. Oh, you've caught a stone in your hoof. It's nothing. Oh, you may say that now, but tonight it will lodge deeper. Come, I'll take it out for you. Yes, thank you. Can you lean back a bit? What? You're as matted and tangled as my Felix gets when we play in the wood. Who is uh, Felix, your sweetheart? <laughs> no. Felix, he's my dog. Well, I am not a dog. No, of course not. Felix wouldn't be giving me an argument if I were trying to call him. I'd just be silent. It'll only take a moment. I don't want to. Well, then you have to take my word for it. You are greatly improved. Indeed. You look rather splendid. Do look. I never look in that pool. Well, then how do you take a drink of water? I quench my thirst at night. Oh, gentle eyes. No wonder you tire so easily. Here. Very kind, Bill. Kind? Nonsense. I just want you to be strong again so we can play. I don't think I like that game. Oh, no? Well, I know lots of games. Uh, perhaps you'd like something simpler. Maybe, um, oh, coasting on swings. Swings? You don't have any about here, do you? Well, tell me what you want. I will conjure it for you. Oh, good. Um, two ropes. A plank uh, for a seat, and uh, a lovely tree to hang it from. Oh, well, this will never do. You've left out the most important part. Tell me what is wanting. You've left out yourself. You must push me while I swing. 
I promise not to touch you. Well, touching and pushing are two altogether different things. Yes. There. Right, now just push. Good. Right. A little harder. Well, I don't think I would. I would get seasick. Seasick? Have you ever been to sea? No. Well, then stop jumping to conclusions like your Aristotle. Sit. Don't be afraid. Hold on tight. There. And I shall push you very gently. And I will tell you a story. A uh, story? <laughs> One specially for you. Once upon a time... Is it a true story? truer than anything your Aristotle ever said. <laughs> now, do be silent. I should lose my place. Whenever he wanted to Chocolate cake, Belle. Oh, no, not tonight. Don't tell me you've lost your taste for sweets. Oh, perhaps a fresh pear and a bit of cheese. Until tomorrow. No, stay. Please. But if I stay, I may again frighten you. Oh, no. We shall have no such nonsense. We shall keep ourselves occupied. Another story. No, I think not. Tonight, we shall create our own grand ball. A dance. <laughs> I cannot dance. Oh, of course you can. There's not a prince born that cannot dance. It comes with the crown and the kingdom. That is your pleasure, I will try. This room is perfect. All the space we need, we just want a bit of music. sound I know. Well, no matter. I will teach you. Um, put out your arms. Hold them out. I'm not very graceful. I wasn't fashioned for dancing. Oh, my dear gentle eyes, believe me, you are just as graceful as the country farmers who dance. Now, put this hand here. No, a little higher. There. A little tighter. If you were to follow me, you must know where I will take you. Now, this hand here. Huh? Are you ready? Music! Now hold tight. Just move your feet to the music. That's right. That's good. Come on. It's better. You're dancing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Are you happy here, Belle? Oh, I hope not. But I thought... Tonight you seemed so happy. Doesn't Aristotle say that happiness comes at the end of some action? Well, in that case, I refuse to be happy. For I do not wish this to end. It need never end, Belle, if you married me. Oh, dear gentle eyes. Can't you content yourself with what we have? I do not wish to leave you now or ever. Is that not content? I would be content, but I have no choice. Come. All men are free to choose. You forget I am not a man. What does that matter? I have come to care for you more than I have ever cared for any man. More than I ever dreamed possible. You're my dearest friend. My patient teacher. Indeed, my kind, loving pet. Oh, but marriage. Surely that wants a different kind of love. Perhaps, once you have learned to behave in a more human fashion. Indeed, when you have acquired the manners of a man, I may then... That is impossible. Why? You once said that the impossible must be possible. I'm a little bit tired now, gentle eyes. I bid you good night. I did not expect to see you about this morning, Belle. I have no choice, do I? Where else can I go? Perhaps you would prefer to be alone. I am alone. I have a surprise for you. I need no more surprises. What would you have me do? Apologize? Well, I cannot. 
You were told never to leave the castle at night. How do you think I live? On love of you alone? On air? I'm alive, therefore I must eat. You said you would not apologize. Please, do as you say. Well, do you like it? It is most unusual. Is that all you have to say? Well, this is the only blue rose in the world, and I created it, especially for you. Huh, believe me, the bush protested, wanted to give me lavender, then tried to hold out for purple. But I would not let it rest until it had given me the perfect blue. You need not have tried so hard. I do not like blue roses. They are ugly and unnatural. You will not forgive me for last night. There is nothing to forgive. You taught me not to blame any creature for following its own nature. Thank you for understanding, Val. Now it is you who must understand, Beast. It is my nature to crave human companionship. What is it you wish? Let me go. I would return to my family. I would see my own people with all their faults. I would walk in my own rose garden with all its mildew and rust. Please try to understand, Beast. I miss everything that is real, real and human. If I let you go for a day... No, a week. I must have a week. I am certain of nothing. Of who I am. Who you are. Indeed. If I do discover that I love you, then I must hate myself. For you are not human, and you cannot change. Oh, please. Don't touch me. Please. I like your touch. And I loathe myself for liking it. There is a ring on your finger. It will take you home. You have but to place it by your bedside, and when you awaken, you will be in your father's house. What you wish from here is presents for your family. Have no fear. There is no magic in these. They are only worthless emeralds and diamonds. You're a generous beast. Too generous. For only one week, Belle. If you do not return when the week is out, I will die. Trust me. When the week is out, go to your father's stable. Place the ring on your finger. And there, among the beasts, if you wish to return, you will. Go to my father's stable and wish to return. With the ring, Belle. With the ring. You will not betray me. No. I will never betray you. Goodbye, beast. Goodbye, Belle. How along with the fashionable stench of a city street. Countryside's so deceitful. Remember how beautiful it looked when we were rich and used to drive through it in Father's great coach? All the charming peasants of the labors. All the little shepherdesses and the milkmaid. <laughs> the honest farmer's wife wiping her honest brow. How is it everything turned out so horrid? Fact is, it's lovely to pass through the countryside, but... Miserable to be part of the view. Someday, dear sister-in-law, I hope that you won't be part of my view. You wouldn't have to look at me so much if you did an honest day's work round here. Lucy, I won't have you say another word against my husband. Where would we be if we didn't have the game he killed for our dinner? Game? You call those nasty little birds he catches game? I've spotted flies that were bigger than that. It'd be far better if you helped round here on the farm. You... Rubbish! I was raised a gentleman. I don't come from peasant stock like you. I married beneath me. Oh, peasant! Our father had a fleet of ships which are famous for... For sinking! Well, at least you could chop up some wood for the fire. Yeah, I could start with that pile of splinters your father sits in all day. <laughs> Can't you ever stop arguing? We don't need advice from you, young man. Do you know how sad it makes father? 
father likes looking sad. Don't you, father? Father's only happy when he's sad. I hate to speak ill of the dead, but I do think it was selfish of Belle to go off to die without leaving her recipe for barley bread. Susan, I will not have you say one word against my sainted sister. Huh? You're a fine one to talk. You were always so rude to her. <laughs> rude, yes. That's because I'm honest and direct. Never sarcastic. Sure, but not pretty. Oh, Felix. Oh, 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 oh. oh good boy, Felix. God, we thank you for what you've given us. And please bless our poor sister Belle in heaven. Amen. Amen. Now, will you give me some of that filthy porridge? It's enough that I cook around here. I shall no longer wait on any of you. If you want something, you can fetch it for yourselves. Did you escape? Is he following? In a moment, I'll answer all your questions. Just let me look at you. She's thinner. Fatter. <laughs> Beautiful. Is he coming too? Who? The beast. Oh, no, he cannot leave the castle. He tired of her. I knew he would, just as I warned. Give them your youth and beauty and they abandon you. No, Lucy, I'm only here for a holiday. I return in a week. Yes, let her be. You'll hear about it later on. Come, let me show you the gifts I've brought. You see? This one is for you. Oh, no. Don't be afraid. It's perfectly safe, I assure you. Thank you. Susan? For you? Thank you, Belle. And Nicholas, I brought these for you. What do I want with those? Well, there was nothing in the king's treasure chest for a boy, and I thought these would make excellent lures for your fishing pole. Emeralds for catching fish? That's madness. I'll try them at once. Nicholas, give them to me, and I'll have Anthony dig up a nice bucket of earthworms for you. No, Susan, you have your gift. I want Nicholas to have those. As you wish, Belle. I suppose he gave you jewels enough to squander as you will. No, I have no jewels. Come, Belle, you must have brought something back with you. Nothing. What about that ring you're wearing? Keepsake. Let me try it on. I think not. It must be a very valuable keepsake if you refuse your own sister's request. It is from the king, and I value all his gifts. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll change my clothes and go fishing with Nicholas. She's different. Nonsense. Susan's right for the first time in her life, father. Belle's grown haughty and superior. Oh, oh, Belle, I caught one. It's a beauty necklace. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a beauty. Get it here. Oh, yes, you can bring... Ah, that's it. Ah, that, ah. it's wonderful. Oh, look. Well, now, let's put them back quickly. But, but why I want to show them to the family? Well, Susan says that we're having venison for dinner tonight. You mustn't kill something that you cannot eat, necklace. But I'll never catch another one like it. Well, of course not. Nothing ever happens twice the same way. That's the pleasure of living. That. Is that what the beast told you? How did you know that? Whenever you say something that you really believe, it's something he said. Yes. He's the wisest creature I've ever known. Beauty, eh? Big, and it'll be tasty, too. Got him with one shot. You don't believe me? Then stay and watch me kill the fawn and the doe. 
Surely there's enough meat in that stag to feed us for days, Anthony. Why must you kill more? Why not? It's daylight. We can kill as long as we have the light. What do you say, boy? Want to try my gun? Belle, would you mind if I... You may do as you please. But I'm going home. Father, look at her, taking all the choice bits for herself. Nonsense, I left the haunch for you. Bristle and bone, that's what you left. Not that I mind, but you know how Anthony likes his meat fat. He must. Why else would he have married you? <laughs> girls, girls, no quarrels enough, please. Uh, you may take mine, Anthony. I haven't touched it. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. I'm not hungry today. I suppose our food isn't fine enough after what she used to eating at the castle. No doubt we don't prepare it like the beast did. Belle likes to eat hers on the hoof <laughs> now. The king did eat his food raw, but only to survive. Killing and eating were not blood sports at the castle. Well, you'll just have to get used to the way things are done at home. Papa, may I be excused? I would like to work in my garden for a bit and prune the roses. Papa, I will always love you. <laughs> May I help you? Oh, there's little enough left for me to do. I've missed the bloom. Well, yes, you could stake that bush up against the wind if you like. Uh, I'm uh, sorry about leaving you to go hunting with Anthony. You're nearly a grown man. You're free to do as you choose. It wasn't what you wanted. What I want doesn't matter here. In the human world, one must behave as a human. Is that so hard for you, Belle? Hmm. Yes. I'm afraid I can no longer live without magic. Oh, if it's magic you want, I can give it to you. Oh, you can. How? Oh, I learned some splendid card tricks from a traveling minstrel. Nicholas. That's not magic. If there's some sort of trick of the beast that you favor, I could learn it, I promise you. Well, maybe not a blue rose, but anything else. No, that's not the kind of magic I miss. I miss his courtesy, his wisdom, his kindness. That's the kind of magic I feel I can no longer live without. And I don't think you can get that from a traveling minstrel. And I don't think you can get that from a traveling minstrel. When are you going to leave us? Soon. My week is up tomorrow. Tonight? I think it's better that you don't know. I shall simply leave as I came. I don't want to hurt them, Nicholas. It's best that they think some enchantment took me away. I'll never forget you, Belle. Nor are you, Nicholas. Now what ails him? She probably snubbed him, too. That's not it. I know. She's leaving tonight. Without a word, she wouldn't. Father would never let her go. That's why she's sneaking off. Good riddance, I say. I'm tired of Princess Belle and her fancy ways. That beast is welcome to her. Did you see the way she kept twisting her ring through lunch, afraid one of us might steal the precious jewel? As if she couldn't spare one with all she must have at the castle. I'm going to ask her for it. She'll never give it to you. She hardly ever has it off her finger, except when she's doing some gardening. I suppose she thinks she'll scratch it. So she leaves it in the garden shed. You don't have to ask her for it. What do you mean? She's out there now, pruning her precious roses. She 
never see you go into the garden shed if you were careful. Anthony, we could. Could we? Only if you let me wear it Sundays. It's yours for the weekdays. What's the matter, child? My ring, it's gone. John, I'll get the family to help you look for it. Children! Perhaps you've misplaced it. No, I did misplace it. It was stolen from the potting shed. Father, what's happened? Why is Belle crying? Belle's lost her ring. Have any of you seen it about? I'll give you anything. Anything is else. Is it so valuable? Yes! Well, then you've only yourself to blame if some tinker passed by and stole it. Imagine leaving a valuable ring about in a clay pot in a shed. How did you know where I left it? Doesn't everyone leave rings in clay pots? Lucy, did you take my ring? Are you accusing me of stealing, Belle? If that is so, you've not only lost a ring, you've lost a sister. Two sisters. Come, Anthony. We will not witness these family squabbles. Turn it to me. Don't worry, Bell. I'll see that they return it. I won't have any stealing in my house. Give them time to think on what they've done. Oh. And I promise you that within a week, your ring will reappear. <laughs> there is no time! Well, why is it so urgent that you have this ring? It was the ring that brought me from the castle. And it is the only ring that take, can take me back to the castle. So that's why it's so dear to you. Yes. I promised the king that I would be back at the week's end. And it is now seven days. And nobody will blame you if you break your promise to that creature. But I want to keep the promise! Papa, if I do not return, he will die! Good! Then you will get rid of the spell that is cast over you. Come in, all of you. Sit down. Now I know you stole Bell's ring. Father, how can you accuse us? Oh, I thank you for it. Without the ring, she cannot return to the beast's castle. And if she does not return, he will die. Now understand this. Whatever she says or does, you must not be told. Yes, Father. You say he will die? Yes. He will die. What could be better? Once he's dead, we can use the ring to return to his castle. Then we can claim his fortune for ourselves. But don't worry, Belle. You'll have everything you had there. Only this time your family can share it with you. You are not my family. But that loathsome beast is, I suppose. That loathsome beast never lied to me. He has shown me nothing but love and trust. And I will not betray him now. Father, you must stop her. She'll warn him. Don't worry. She cannot find him. But where will she go? She will take a long, tiring ride.
I told you she would. Now we can all stop worrying. She's taking the horse into the stable. Should I go and help her now? No. Belle has been a very willful daughter. We won't help her until she comes to us for help. Susan and Lucy, you must act like a mother. Strict, but loving. We will, Father. I could have sworn the stone was blue when we found it. Now it's so murky and grey. It's your waxen skin which gives it that shade. Let me try it on. Put it on the table. Better Belle doesn't see you with it for a while. May I see it, Anthony? I suppose there's no harm in your looking. To me. No, it's mine. It belongs to me. No, Nick, that's not the way. Put it down. Uh, hand it over, Bell, or the boy will suffer for it. Don't listen to him, Bell. I can take anything he gives me. Here. Now release him. Uh. You're very brave, Anthony. Enough of your wise remarks. No, I'm very serious. There are not many men who would hold that ring. Why not? Because if you hold it one moment longer, you will be transported to the Beast's castle. Lucy, pick it up. No, it's your turn to wear it. It's Sunday. I will leave you now, but do not think that I will let you hurt Nicholas. If he is harmed, in body or spirit, by any of you, I will be back, and I will not be alone. Belle, you wouldn't! Not the beast here! There's nothing that I would not do to protect my brother. Lucy and Susan, try to find the courage to be kind. You are my sister, so I must forgive you. But I warn you, never again meddle in what you do not understand. What don't we understand, Bill? The power that can make this happen. That can make this happen. Beast, I'm here. I'm back. Beast! Turn. I wish to die. And as you know, my wishes here are law. I should not have stayed for more than one day. I should never have trusted them. It's my fault, and I'll never forgive myself. No, I'm content to die. I've seen you again. I'm happy. No, that's not possible. Does not Aristotle teach us that happiness lies at the end of things? I will not speak of Aristotle or of Kratos on the moon. We will speak of life. Dear gentle eyes, you will live. We will dance and we will play. I'm too weak. Now, I will slay a deer for you and you will regain your strength. Beast, I order you to live! 
if you die, I will die too. I promise you. I will follow you to heaven or to hell or wherever they send such foolish furry creatures as yourself. But I will not abandon you. Oh, listen to me. Listen to me. You must live. Oh, dear God, please let him You must live. I'll live that I might marry you. <laughs> Don't you know me, Belle? What have you done with Beast? The Beast is dead. I'm all that remains of it. You've released me from my enchantment. I do not understand. Belle, when I first came to the throne, I believed only in riches and power and pride. I did not believe in love. Because of this, I was cursed and forced to assume the shape of a hideous beast until a beautiful woman freely would consent to marry me. You're that woman, Belle. Don't you believe me? I would like to believe you. There's a difference between what I like and what is true. Well, <laughs> test me. You are a beast. By what names did I call you? Ah, uh, Sir Gentle Eyes. Mm -hmm. My Lord Magic, ah, yes, and uh, my love. What was the color of the rose that Beast gave me the day I left? Blue. As blue as your eyes. Oh, no. <laughs> Beast would never resort to such foolish flattery as that. Ask me anything. I'm free to answer all your questions now. What games did we play in the maze? Hide and seek. And in the dining chamber? We told stories, and we danced. My dear, you must admit I've passed all your tests. Surely, if you can love that beast, you can love me. You are vain. I'm human. Indeed. Does that mean, then, that we shall quarrel, wound each other, be jealous? Will we lie, break our vows? Never. <laughs> no. Beast would never lie to me that way. Beast would never love you this way. My love, will you consider a passion stronger than pity? I will try, my lord. <laughs> 